so depression, isolation, and hopelessness are common. Parkinson's disease is a chronic, progressive illness caused by decreased levels of a chemical in the brain that passes messages between cells that affect movement, balance, and walking. Potential causes vary and include exposure to chemicals, head trauma, and heredity, although in most cases the specific cause is never determined. There is no cure for Parkinson's disease, but symptoms can sometimes be controlled with medications. Movement disorders often make others uncomfortable, leading to isolation and depression for the affected person. The symptoms of Parkinson's disease include tremors, rigid muscles, weakness, poor balance, and shuffling, shuffling gait, slow movement, problems with speech, swallowing, and eating. When caring for patients with Parkinson's disease, assisting with ambulation may be necessary. Encourage lifting the toes and bringing the heel down first, swinging the arms, and standing straight. Be patient. Speech and movements may be slow, but intelligence is not affected. Be aware that timing of medications is essential to maximize their effect and to decrease side effects. Symptoms may be worse if the medication schedule isn't followed precisely. Be alert for hallucinations. While they are not part of the disease process, they can be a side effect of some Parkinson's medications. As with the other neuro disorders, prevent complications of immobility. Parkinson's patients also need emotional support and encouragement. Remember that family members and others may be uncomfortable with the movement disorders and avoid the patient. Dementia is another neurological disorder that we will cover briefly because it is covered in more detail in other lessons. It is the gradual decline of intellectual functioning and cognitive ability. Dementia is associated with structural, chemical, and functional abnormalities in various regions of the brain. Symptoms vary from mild to severe and may include memory loss, disorientation and wandering, impaired judgment and problem-solving skills, the need for reminders and assistance with activities of daily living, and delusions or aggressive behavior. When caring for patients with dementia, a calm, non-stimulating environment is helpful. Provide simple cues, a structured routine, and constructive diversional activities. Avoid complex vocabulary. Remember that overstimulation, changes in routine or environment, and tasks that are beyond the person's ability can trigger agitation. Family caregivers should also be given much emotional support. Spinal cord injury is a common cause of disability among the 18 to 35 year old age group. This occurs when injury causes permanent disruption of impulses to and from the brain. Common causes include motor vehicle crashes, falls, violence, and recreational injuries. Spinal cord injuries are defined by the level of injury which is described by the surrounding vertebrae. For example, a C2 injury is the second vertebrae of the cervical region, and a T10 injury is the tenth vertebrae of the thoracic region. A quadriplegic has paralysis of all four extremities and the trunk. A paraplegic has paralysis of only the lower extremities and the lower trunk. The degree of damage may be complete, meaning that all functions below the level of injury are lost, or incomplete, meaning that some functions are lost but others remain intact. Symptoms depend on the level of injury and the degree of damage. Some examples are paralysis, loss of sensation, meaning that the patient cannot recognize pain, temperature, or location of body parts, muscle atrophy, bone weakening, slower digestion and elimination, bladder and bowel incontinence, and impaired respiratory muscles with injuries above T7. They may have shallow, ineffective breathing and be unable to cough or sneeze, putting them at risk for pneumonia. Nursing care of patients with spinal cord injury should emphasize prevention of complications of immobility. Proper positioning and repositioning is very important. Maintain skin integrity through adequate nutrition and fluid intake 
as well as bathing and repositioning. Active and passive range of motion exercises should be done as appropriate. Assess skin carefully. Remember that the patient may not be able to feel pain and temperature, so they won't know if they have bruises, burns, or pressure ulcers. Prevent respiratory complications by repositioning and encouraging coughing and deep breathing if the patient is able to do so. Explain cares and be reassuring. Because they cannot move or feel some parts of their bodies, patients may have a fear of falling due to their inability to protect themselves. Promote independence by allowing the patient to have control whenever possible and encourage the patient to assist with repositioning and self-care. Traumatic brain injury is another common cause of disability in the 18 to 35 year old age group. It is damage to the brain caused by an external force as can happen with motor vehicle crashes, falls, and assaults. Symptoms depend on the area of the brain injured and may include difficulty coordinating movements, headache, memory problems, fatigue and sleep disturbances, difficulty organizing and staying on task, word finding problems, personality changes, and anger or depression. When caring for people with traumatic brain injury, be patient and allow them extra time to complete tasks. Routine and structure are helpful. Cues, like notes or pictures, for how to do daily cares or other activities can help to promote independence. Be supportive of family and other caregivers. To them, the patient may seem like a different person due to personality and cognitive changes. I have explained some of the common neurological disorders that caregivers may encounter. Keep in mind that they often cause significant and life-changing disabilities for both the patient and family members. Along with preventing complications and promoting independence, emotional support and encouragement are essential to positive outcomes.